Speaking of Middle Eastern migrants, uh, they appear to actively be invading Britain. Now, I don't use the term invasion lightly. Uh, it doesn't apply to migrants who come here legally. But I think that when you get on a boat and then illegally arrive on the shores of a place, that's suitably termed an invasion. I don't think that's an unfair characterization, uh, which is why I'm going to use it, even though lots of people have been using it for regular immigration, which I don't agree with. Uh, but for this particular case of the channel crossings into Britain, it is an invasion, and it's now twice the size of the Norman army that invaded in 1066 and conquered England. So just saying, it's getting rather concerning. Uh, this has been going on for years now, where uh, apparently migrants are somehow able to find seaworthy boats, dinghies and things like that, and just sail across the channel as if there's no one who can stop them. And for some reason, in July uh, this year, uh, the Crown Prosecution Service was like, well, we're not going to prosecute them for committing a crime anymore. I wonder why. The agreement was made between police prosecutors and the National Crime Agency, Border Force and the Home Office over cases of illegal entry, uh, covering the, also covering those arriving, arriving by lorry. Uh, the guidance sets out circumstances in which attempting to cross the English Channel is considered criminal, and apparently these migrants don't, uh, don't, ri don't fulfil that guidance now. So illegally breaking into the country is no longer a crime. So there's something about these cases which always always rubs me up the wrong way. Mm. So this seems to be an agreement between police, prosecutors, NCA, Border Force, Home Office. That's five institutions. Mm. None of them are elected. Mm. None of them make laws, but That's they are right. taking it into their own hands to decide which laws to enforce. Yes. So they are making themselves de facto lawmakers in this country without election. That's a fantastic point. And I will show people why they're doing this in a minute, because you are absolutely correct. There's, the very nature of what they're doing is frankly abhorrent, totally unaccountable and totally against the traditions of this country. But before we get to that, uh, this is accelerating. This is not slowing down. Now, last year, there was something like 12,000 people who came across. Well, we have reached record breaking numbers now, because it turns out that if you decriminalize breaking into this country, and the French government helps facilitate people breaking into this country, then you'll get a lot of people breaking in. So the other day, uh, on Thursday, that's past the previous day's daily rec record of 853 with 1,200. I think it was actually 1,182 or something like that. But 1,200 will do for layman's work. Uh, that means that more than 23,500 people have reached the UK on small boats this year. William the Conqueror only had about 9,800 men. Just a thought. Anyway, a home, so home, office sp home office spokesperson said the public have had enough of the crossings and the number was unacceptable. But what's the home office's position on the crossings? I mean, I accept that the public has had enough of this and it is unacceptable, but why doesn't the home office take a position on this that's not decriminalise it? Uh, the number of illegal immigrants we have seen departing from France today is unacceptable. The British public have had enough of seeing people die in the channel while ruthless criminal gangs profit from their misery. And our new plan for immigration will fix this broken system which encourages migrants to make this lethal journey. That wasn't the concern. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was a concern. It, it was, it was a, a concern that was slightly lower down the list. I mean, nobody wants to see anyone die, obviously. Uh, but the main concern is that tens of thousands of illegal immigrants are invading Britain from across the continent. That's the problem. I mean, the public does generally, when polled, want less immigration overall. And this Li is consistent for decades. Uh, it's <laughs> literally for, well, I mean, since the immigration began, frankly. And possibly before. Well, yeah, that's probably why immigration wasn't something that happened, is because people didn't want it. And now, I mean, and it, this is all in total defiance of public opinion, and always has been, as you say. Uh, but the, the point there, note, note the framing. And again, the framing is important because this is coming from a, an unnamed Home Office spokesperson. Uh, but uh, they don't want people dying in the channel and they're going to fix the system which encourages them to make this lethal journey. Well, what does that fix look like? We don't know yet because this is all very recent, but it's going to be giving them easier access to the country. That's what it's going to be. People who have got no legal claim to come into the country and I don't know why they don't just take the same legal routes that literally 700,000 people last year took. Who knows? But uh, anyway, 
Priti Patel had apparently promised two years ago that migrant crossings would be an infrequent phenomenon, but of course this did not happen. Uh, and in an, in an attempt to fulfill this promise, the government has agreed to pay France millions of pounds, 54 million pounds, in fact, to increase security on its northern coast. But the number of migrants reaching UK shores has, of course, in, continued to increase, although it still sees fewer asylum claims than many other European countries. Well, that's because they were in the Schengen zone and Germany agreed to take in somewhere in the number of 2 million illegal immigrants because Mama Merkel opened the German people's hearts and uh, should be held responsible for all of the terrible things that have happened since. But because of the Schengen zone, that means they can just go anywhere. And uh, we weren't in it, so they couldn't come here for good reason. So are France doing this despite us over Brexit? Ask yes. The Telegraph. Hard to imagine they're not. It's genuinely hard. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, they could be doing it for a, a layered series of reasons, all of them based in spite and all of them based over the last thousand odd years so of history. Uh, but uh, Britain has accused France, as the Telegraph report, of ceding sovereign territory to criminal people smugglers. Not the first time they've done that. I mean, that is how Normandy was created when the French king ceded territory on the northern coast. I think we're going back a bit too far here. Well, you say that, but I mean, you know, to, to, to criminal people smugglers, yes, the Vikings did trade slaves. Uh, the, it's, very, it's just weird how history has this repeating aspect to it. Um, uh, France is uh, said to have stopped just, quote, a couple of boats so far, uh, which means, of course, thousands of migrants are coming across. Is that to refit them with better engines? Uh, well, I mean, I can only imagine. Where do they keep getting these boats from? Boats aren't cheap. How do these penniless migrants somehow keep getting access to boats? Uh, but anyway, this, uh, this, of course, after France pledged that they would have a 100% rate in return in exchange for £54 million a year that we're going to give them. A white horse source, again, an unnamed source says, Today the French government failed in their duty to protect life and uphold the joint agreement stop small boats leaving France. They let hundreds of people potentially sell to their death whilst only stopping a couple of boats. Again, see the problem. Okay, yes, I agree that there is a risk of death when crossing the channel illegally, and I don't want to see anyone die, but that isn't my major concern. My major concern is that France is facilitating tens of thousands of illegal immigrants entering into Britain. You will notice that completely absent from this Home Office narrative is any reference to the people of Britain. Mm. It's almost as if they don't exist. They're irrelevant to this problem. Well, the only, the only reference we had was people are tired of watching migrants die in the channel. They want an easier route for them to enter the country. And when they say the people of Britain, they probably mean the people who live in about a square mile around Westminster. Uh, but uh, anyway, yes. Yeah, so this... This, again, with nearly 24,000 people. Terrible, terrible thing, but never mind. So there seems to be a distinct lack of understanding among the people running the border force and the Home Office and all of the other government agencies involved in this. And interestingly, a speech was leaked from a Mr. Paul Lincoln, who has served as the Director General of the Border Force since 2017, making his departure speech. Uh, and th there were some fascinating comments from this uh this position by the way hundred thirty-five thousand pounds a year good job if you can get it especially if you don't have to do it <laughs> if, you, if you can just say well i'm in charge of enforcing our borders but also i'm not enforcing our borders and none of the other institutions who are responsible for enforcing the borders are going to hold me to any kind of account why would this be well it's because the civil service the the border force all of the the home office all of these institutions are packed with remainers Apparently 95% of them voted to remain. Not very representative of a country that at least half, and over half, of the people wanted to leave. So anyway, he, uh, there are excerpts of the speech that Breitbart got hold of, and uh, things like uh, where he was quoting Shane McGowan of the Pogue song, saying, people are talking about immigration, emigration, the rest of the bloody thing, it's all bloody crap. Uh, I think that if you're in charge of policing the borders... Maybe you should have a more serious opinion. On One has borders? to wonder who hired this guy because they are yeah. at least as bad. Well, I that, can guarantee it. That would be the Conservative Party because this was done in 2017. But then, and what are you going to do? But uh, again, like the 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 chief of the Border Patrol force quoting the Pogues on immigration, not terribly serious. Uh, but apparently, he concluded his remarks by proclaiming, "quote." We're all human beings, we're all mammals, we're all rocks, plants, and rivers. Uh, not a rock, disavow. Yeah, I, I've never been a river, either. Uh, I, I don't think I'm a plant, although maybe 
there are like I know, maybe when I have hay fever, maybe there's enough pollen in my nose to count. Uh, but bloody borders are such a pain in the bloody ass. So the chief of border patrol says those borders are a pain in the ass, aren't they? We're all just humans after all, aren't we? We're all just the same. You would think that being the border chief of an island would be the easiest <laughs> job in the world. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't would, you? wouldn't you? I mean, Japan does not have these problems, I can well, assure you. Poland and Belarus are currently having a very similar set to, and the Polish are doing a much better job than we are. And we've got the natural defences of the English Channel. I mean, we, like, it's hard to imagine this is not intentional, especially given this kind of attitude. Well, there's no difference between the British and, say, the Somali migrants who are currently making their way across. There's just no difference whatsoever. So, I mean, apparently we're all rocks, plants, and rivers. Whatever that's supposed to mean. Uh, these borders are a pain in the bum. And it's like, yes, yes, they are. For the people whose job it is to patrol them, yours, for six figures a year that you're not doing. Just do your job. That's it. That's all we want you to do. Just do your job. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not like not being handsomely rewarded for it either. But uh, but the point is, look what he's appealed to here. This this is something I covered in a video, a uh, speech I did at the live event called The Universal Human. And it's because, as Roger Scruton observed, that during the Age of Enlightenment, the Age of Sail, Europeans went around the world and were like, oh, look, there's humans everywhere. And they've all got certain similar traits. Yes, they do. And so these are essentially the key essential traits of what it is to be a human. You have to have these things to be a human, and that's true. But when you do that, what you do to, to be able to abstract away into a universal view of what a human being is, and we're all human beings, we're all mammals, we're all rocks, plants, and rivers, uh, what you have to do is subtract those things that aren't universal. As in, we particularly speak English, where a lot of these migrants don't. We uh, are a Christian country where these migrants don't come from a Christian country. We have particular views on women that are not shared by these migrants and things like that. So all of the particulars that are unique to us, or not unique or just particular to us, but are not particular to these migrants, they have to be essentially subtracted away from your calculus. Uh, so you can arrive at the condition where, well, we're all human beings, therefore there are no differences between us. And that's what I was talking about in there. Uh, but anyway, returning to the article... I just want to bring this up because, look, it's, you know, these are things that genuinely are going on here. This is the way these people view the world. But uh, returning to the article, uh, the, the Breitbart said that rather than protecting the nation's borders, the border force have been accused of acting as a taxi service for illegal immigrants. Because with, they are. Because they are, yes, rightfully uh, have been accused of this. Because border force boats regularly pick up migrants in the middle of the channel and ferry them to the port of Dover. The border force has also reportedly travelled into French territorial waters to pick up migrants and bring them back to Britain. And suddenly it becomes a lot more apparent why they're doing this, because the people running the border force are against borders. How does someone who is an anti-borders activist get in charge of the nation's borders? It's a mystery. It's a mystery that only the conservatives can answer for us. Anyway, Priti Patel's home office has called for the border force to begin turning back migrants back to France. I guess just today, I saw or something, because they could have been doing this since the Conservatives came to power in 2010. Uh, however, last week, a Border Force official told the media there is no appetite within the agency of enacting the government's wishes, saying there is a fairly universal agreement this is not likely to ever happen. Then fire them. <laughs> then defund the Border Force. <laughs> then create a new institution that will do what the government, the elected government of the country, is actually going to do to protect its territorial integrity, as it has a legal, not just right, but obligation to do. It's mad, isn't it? It goes back to what I said at the start of it. It's these unelected institutions which have got together around a table, same social class, same set of beliefs, yep. and they've said to themselves, well, this is what the public wants, and this is what the, the government that wants, but we're the state, and what we want to do is what gets done. So and we all, don't want to do this. We're all just trees and rivers, really, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, them trees, them rivers, them All rocks. the same. I mean, it's the, the xenophobic, bigoted, right-wing, Brexit-voting, gammon public that doesn't seem to understand that you know, the Somali immigrants are just the same as people from small towns in England. It's exactly the same. There's no difference at all. No cultural differences whatsoever. I mean, you do get this sort of example from, say, Wigan, where Lisa Nandy, a famously left-wing, pro-immigration, pro-refugee uh, Labour politician, uh, has had to ask Wigan hotels to stop putting up these illegal immigrants because they're harassing schoolgirls. We all just harass schoolgirls, don't we? It's just what happens all over this country. 12-year-olds getting harassed by adult men everywhere they go. 
It's been a long-standing problem in this country. Or when I say problem, I mean that implies that we're doing something wrong when doing it. But if we're all the same and everyone's good and just and has done nothing wrong by illegally invading our country, then how can we condemn this? I mean, I personally, as a father, think this is despicable and these people should be fired off of the cliffs of Dover out of a catapult. But then what do I know? I'm a gammon. I'm a right winger. What do I know about this, right? So several parents from this school uh, had told Wigan today, this this outlet, uh, that they are stopping their daughters from going out because groups of men have been filming their PE sessions at the local school, winking and passing comments at them in the street, and in one instance, surrounding a 12-year-old girl and filming her. We're all just the same. We're all just humans, you see. We've all got the same social standards. Nothing about cultures is different across anywhere in the world, and that's diversity. One mum said, and I love this because this just goes to show you the, the depth of programming in the regular British public here, the behaviour of a small number of men from the Britannia Hotel has been causing a lot of upset. They're not from the hotel. Yeah, they weren't <laughs> born there. No, they're from like Algeria and Morocco and Somalia and Afghanistan and wherever. But no, these it's a small number of these men because the rest of them haven't done anything yet. Uh, but they clearly need educating. If you flee from your own country and want to be accepted in a new one, then you need to learn the new country's ways. What if you don't want to learn the new country's ways? What if you like harassing 12-year-olds? Which they seem to. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it, would they? It'd be kind of weird. Yeah, good idea to have something like a border to stop that sort of person getting in, wouldn't it? If we had any information on them at all, that would be useful. Mm. But we don't know that we haven't just allowed in 23,000 paedophile criminal rapists because they entered illegally. And we're just like, here's a four-star hotel. Would you like to stay in here for a while? Would you like some money from the taxpayer? Because that's what you're going to get. And Lisa and Andy was like, yeah, that's a great idea, until they start harassing children. Uh, but uh, but obviously, that's the sort of thing a toxic bigot would say. Oh, you got me. <laughs> I do. In fact, she's got you. She knew you were going to say that, right? Yeah. You need to learn the new country's ways. The last thing we want is all the right-wing thugs using this as an excuse to bring their toxic messages to Wigan again and whipping up racism. That's right. It's, it's just racism. The only reason you could possibly dislike illegal immigrants who invade your country and they start harassing children is because you hate brown people. That's it. And if, you, if you've got any other reason, you're a liar. And uh, yeah, so, you know, this is the general state of the country at the moment. Another one said they've got police around Standish High now, which is their school, uh, just after the school because of what's been going on, and that offers some reassurance. Brilliant. Brilliant. So now the the school has to be guarded by the police. So not only do the MPs have bodyguards, now the schools have bodyguards. Yes. So it's spreading. Well, in, yes. in the end, there will be no one but bodyguards in this country. But at least they accept the uh, the significance and the usefulness of a guarded border. Even if it's just at the school, Just not the national border. Just not the national border. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast Lotus Eaters, you can catch us live 1pm UK time on our website. And if you'd like more from us, you can also subscribe to find some of our premium content. Yeah, we actually have absolutely loads on there now because we're over a year old at this point. So we've got a massive library of content that you can't find anywhere else, uh, such as our regular series, which are Contemplations and Epochs. Contemplations, we have philosophical and scientific discussions. And in Epochs, we have long, in-depth conversations about things that happen in history. This is one we did recently about the Nika riots, the absolutely brutal Nika riots in Constantinople. I really enjoyed doing myself. But we also have access to, we have sort of loads of expert articles from people who know what they're talking about, such as this one talking about the misnomer of postmodern neo-Marxism. You may well remember Jordan Peterson getting castigated by left-wing activists for using the phrase. Well, it is a bit of a misnomer, but Thomas happens to be an expert in this subject, and so he takes you through it. And as you can see, there is a silver and gold tier member audio uh, track that goes along with it. So if you don't want to have to read it, you can just listen to it instead. But we also have a bunch of premium podcasts that we can't really host on YouTube because of editorial guidelines, shall we say, uh, such as Harry doing this excellent one, What Happened to the January 6th Rioters, and another one, in fact, that Harry and myself did yep. about uh, a whistleblower from a German public broadcaster talking about the COVID coverage and the particularly uh, engineered narrative uh, in which they can't talk about certain things. And so this leaves a bunch of questions up in the air and... We explore that. Again, editorial guidelines mean we can't really host that elsewhere. We also have a bunch of really excellent interviews. I did one recently with a chap called Philip Tanzer. He's a, if, you, if you're a men's rights activist, you may have heard of him because he comes out of that space. But he's also a, an ex-gay porn star who's turned conservative activist who 
has some very interesting opinions. Very interesting trajectory to take. Yeah, it, it's it's the sort of person you're probably not going to meet in your regular life, but uh, he's a fascinating guy. He's a really nice chap. Uh, and also, follow us on alternative media, because, of course, we want to break the stranglehold of Silicon Valley over everything that we do. And this means that follow us on plat- platforms like Ghetto, where you can follow Lotus underscore com to get all the latest updates from us. And also, we are speaking, or I am speaking, at a conference hosted by Getter at the London O2, the Indigo uh, section of the London O2, on December the 8th. I'll be speaking there as a, it's part of the Counterculture Conference, uh, where we're talking about why what is happening to the West is happening and what we can do about it. So part of that is following us on Getter and coming and see us, and of course, subscribe, because that keeps everything running.